turn and go towards Master Bay or Elmdale, Master Bay. Okay. She the road across from that hmm. by that barn there. Because I know if you go across that bridge by the Wagachi Inn, there's horses. You take a left, and there's horses down that That's way. That's right. That used to be the the uh, 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 Chisholm Sisters. Chisholm, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they were they were led to uh, Ken Story. And when they died, he got the property. Oh, that's who it was, Stories. Yeah, Ken Story, amen. Yeah. And then uh, he passed. He was he was married to Diane. After he passed, her boyfriend moved in. And then I found out this year, she's done. She's gone. And, and her the property. Still well, I don't know what the story is there. All I know is that, that Ken and Diane apparently deeded the property to her daughter. Mm -hmm. And she's... Not a, a situation financially that the, the they care of the property and pay the taxes, so it may be a bill. Uh, right. All right, let's go to um, Exodus 34. We're dealing with the areas where uh, this would be a, uh, there's, there's a few chapters you'd like to pull out of uh, the Bible. Nation of Israel would be like 32, uh, 33, and 34, except for the one part in 34, I mean 33, where uh, uh, he gets to see the Lord face to face. But we noticed he, uh, the way it was said to him, he said to him, uh, he said, I'll put you in a cleft of a rock. Cliff, cliff of a rock. And he turns around and he says something. He says, I'm going to show you my back parts. And uh, we went over that, that uh, uh, he goes, I'm going to, I'm going to pass, get all my goodness to pass uh, before you. He said, show me thy glory. He said, well, I'm going to show you. Uh, look at verse number 19 back in 33. And he says, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass uh, before thee. So we went over some verses that talked about the goodness of God. And we realized that what, real, what had happened was Moses actually uh, went back in time. And, uh, and he got to see the creation, the goodness. It's very good. And God made sure he understood something in Psalms. He says, hey, look, I'm, that's the goodness of God, the creator God. Okay, so Moses goes uh, back in time. There's a few guys that go that, you know, I know people go, well, there's no time travel. Time. Look, there's time travel in the Bible. John time traveled. He was there. Uh, Moses went back. He's the only guy that we know that went back. You, you have to understand something. These are, these are things that God does. Uh, we realize something about the regular man. He's hedged in. What's that? He can see the past. God has allowed you to see the past, uh, but you can't go back. Uh, he lets you go forward into the future, go into the future, but he doesn't let you see into it. It's just the opposite. Um, but now uh, Moses gets to see his back parts. He gets to speak face to face with him. And then in 34, we dealt with the second chance. Now, this is where it all changes for, for people uh, and for us because the first uh, commandments that come out, who made, this, who made the tablets was God. And God wrote on the tablets, who made the second tablets? Moses. Moses made them. And then, but who wrote on them? Well, God wrote on them. So now we see that how God's way is now, uh, even today, is we supply the paper and the book, and God supplies the words. Amen. Amen. So what you have in front of you is a uh, is God's book, but it's it's God and man participating. And you have to understand something that Jesus had said. He said, "You'll do uh, greater things than these." And people don't realize the greatest thing that has ever happened is that um, the greatest miracle is the new birth. But the greatest wonder that you can imagine is God taking a broken vessel that's not perfect and being able to do something perfect. Spread the gospel, a perfect gospel. Uh, God uh, is using a depraved man and he's taking him and he's doing good works with him. You know, uh, that's a miracle. That's, a, that's greater things. Why? Uh, it would have been easy for Jesus just to come to earth, uh, write a book, and hand it to us. He could have done it, but God got us into it. And it, this was the whole setup back then, even then, that, hey, look, this is the way it's going to be from then on. Uh, I don't know much about the book of Job, how it was, even though it was the first book, but I, I would say God's already set up a standard in the Bible. 
right here. So uh, he gives him a second ch second chance. Shows you even the Godhead in it in verse number six of thirty four, where he says, uh, "And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, comma the Lord God. You have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Ghost in, uh, in there." And uh, God wants you to understand there; it's always been there. And then he says in verse number seven, he says, uh, "Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, three things, and." That will by no means clear the guilty. God wants to forgive, but He can't clear you. It had to come later on when, when Jesus Christ came to clear the guilty. And He says something here. He says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. Uh, who were, what, what, what does He keep visiting? Idolatry. Idolatry is the biggest thing. In Romans chapter 1, uh, we seem to head right to the Sodomites, head right to all those things. When God turns around and says, I hold on a second here, uh, they're kind of like a symptom. He says, idolatry brought you there. And he goes, and I gave them I gave them up. And then they, to do these things. And then he gives them up again. They do worse things. And then what happens in the end? He gives them over. What's that? It's, that's it. That's it. I, I understand what preachers preach, but I, I understand the Word of God. What's that? There's a time when God says, that's it, I'm done with you. And you need, you've seen these type of people. There's a time when God, that's a dumb, dumb, I'm done, I'm done, I'm if, if you don't realize it in the tribulation, there's a time where he goes, that's it. Read your tribulation, there's a time where nobody's getting saved. In it. Uh, but I think, you know, God will save anybody as long as they repent. They come to a point where they're not going to him. You know, that's it. Okay, so anyway, he tells Moses, he says, make haste in verse number 8, 34, 8. Make haste. And what is the first thing he does? Moses made haste and he did what? He bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. The right idea. You, you, you hear something, you, what's the, it needs personal time. Worship is personal. It's between me and the Lord. Praise is public. That's when we're all together. Okay, that's something that preachers that aren't, aren't talking about today. They call it the worship service. Uh, let me tell you something, the worship service, where in the Bible does it say worship and music at the same time? It's praise and music. It's worship between God and I. There's only one, there's only twice in the Bible where there's worship and music. Uh, one is when God defines it and he says, no, worship is worship, music is music. The other time is when worship and music are in the same is Daniel chapter 3. When you hear, that's right. yes, when you hear the instruments, when you hear the timbrels, uh, when, and, and he says in the melody and the, uh, and, uh, and the singing, what do you do? You get down and worship. Have you noticed that that's the big thing today? When you hear the first beat on the, the come forward and get to the altar and you know, I'm not saying that's bad. If you've got to come down and, and think with the Lord for a while, uh, it's a good thing for you. But it's between you and God. Worship is between you and the Lord. Even though we could be praying together, God's looking at the heart of the individual. That, that part of Daniel, the worship was not to God. No, it's to somebody. That's right. Amen. So, uh, now we're going to look over. He says, God, he, he reminds God, he said, you got it, you know, for it is a stiff-necked people. Now we're going to get into uh, verse number 10, and we're going to go, hopefully we'll get to uh, verse 26 uh, today. Remember, this is a more meat than, uh, than you're going to get on a, a regular day, okay? So there's going to be some things that we're going to come out, we're going to have to stop for a little. Uh, the Bible says in verse number 10, he said, behold, I make a covenant. God's the one that makes the covenant. Before all thy people, I do. I will do what? Marvels. I'll do marvels. Such as have not been uh, done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that that which I command thee this day, behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy 
their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Father, bless thy word tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, uh, God's got another name. Yeah. He's got a, You look at that word, and I can tell you right now, you, the first thing that can, comes to somebody's head is, hey, that's not a good word. Uh, it's, it, look, uh, I'm going to tell you something. We have destroyed the English language. We have made new words up, that, and, and I, I know why man, man's got an evil heart. Yeah. The word ignorant does not mean rude. Stop using it like that. Why? Because they've made it that way so you won't say it when somebody is willingly stupid. God says, I don't want you to be ignorant. He doesn't tell you, I don't want you to be rude. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. Stop using it as the word rude. Use the right word. Ignorant means you don't know something. Okay? When a guy's willingly ignorant, you know what God's saying? He is willingly stupid. That's what he's saying. They, they were willingly ignorant. I think God's being pretty polite not to just say, well, he could have put in there, you're just stupid. Yeah, right. But that's the thing, people. Use words right. God does. God uses words right. And the pinnacle and the point and the apex of our language was right here. There are people survey this. Even uh, long ago, they said, man, this is the height of the English language when this book came about. If you haven't noticed something, the, the, the translation went into English. English was not the big thing. Germany was the big thing at the time. Then guess what happened? Well, of course, mankind had to follow the book. Why? God... He told you that he was going to get a pure language someday. And guess what? You got it in your hands. People don't realize it. You know, uh, uh, when he separated everybody in, in uh, Genesis chapter 11, divided it all up, uh, that Genesis 10, of course, uh, uh, brings it out that he's doing all the dividing and stuff. Well, if you were to put them all together you, and you put all their languages, you'd have a language that had all the kinds of roots and suffixes from all the other languages. What language is that on the earth right now? English. It's English. So if you scatter them, you take bits and pieces away. Whatever language they spoke was probably better. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the graded thing, but it's just odd that we're... English is the language for the end times. I'm sorry. It's going to be the language that's going to go into the millennium. That's the way it's going to be. Amen. So, he says, he wants people to understand. He says, this is, this is for the signs and wonders. They're for Israel. He wants them to understand. They're for Israel. Uh, anytime there is anybody speaking in tongues or anything, in, anywhere in Acts, which of course is done away with at the, when the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles are gone. There's no more Apostles. When the Apostles are gone, so are the Acts of the Apostles. Okay, the signs and the wonders. Guess where they went? They're gone. They're gone. Okay, uh, they were for the land of Israel. And he says now, he says, God says, look, I'm, I want to make a covenant. And, uh, and then you're my people. This is my land, he said. These are my people. They're going to go to my seed, which is Jesus Christ. It's actually his land. Okay, and he says in 12, take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with who? These other people. You make, God makes covenants. You're not to make covenants. God makes covenants. That's what he just said. I'll make a covenant. Don't you go making covenants with these people. Okay? Uh, there's a reason. He, he says, what? There'll be a snare in the midst of thee. And look, uh, what did he say? Who was the one that... Solomon. Smartest man, wisest man lives on the earth. You know, I know Jesus Christ. You can correct me later. But we understand that Jesus Christ is different. He's different. Okay? Solomon, other than that, the wisest man lives on the earth. What happened to him? His heart went away. Why? Well, he was getting married to all kinds of women and they, they, were, they were taking his heart away. You know, from the Lord, he, he, he started doing those things. 
Uh, he said, uh, I don't want you to. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of, of the land. Whether thou goest, lest it be a snare in the midst of thee. It's, it's right in the middle. And watch 13. But ye shall do what? This is what I want you to do. I, I want you to destroy their altars. I want you to break their images. I want you to cut down uh, their groves. Now, these are, he wants them to do it physically. This is the Old Testament where it is a physical thing. You are a spiritual people. Uh, we're not going down to uh, say whatever down the road to here and start busting the place up. I'd love to. Come on. I would love to take a chain and take it around their statues and drive around town with it. It would be, uh, it would be a great day to do that. Uh, but we're supposed to, we have, we have more problems with our own images, cutting down the images in our lives. And, you know, that we have. Okay? We have to get rid of our images. Uh, we have to break also their images that are in their head. We have to show them the, the Lord the right way. You have to understand something, people. Okay, God said you have to have, you have to have a doctrine. You have to have a book. Jesus without the book is, is worthless. So what they do is they get rid of the book. They get other get another Bible. It's getting rid of the book. So the reason why they get rid of the book is because if I get rid of this, I can do anything I want. Jesus' name. Do you know that's what they're doing today? That's Protestantism. That's Catholicism. What are they doing? They're sending people to hell. And what? Jesus' name. Why? They got rid of the book. Get rid of the book, you can do almost anything. Hey, didn't they change the Ten Commandments? Why? Well, because there's a million dollar industry in making statues. The Catholics changed the commandment. There's millions and millions of dollars in little tikis. So you get rid of the commandment, now you can do anything you want. You can call it Jesus, too. Don't you see how the plan goes? That's how it all works out. Okay, so he says... We want to destroy these things. And he says here in 14, look, he's, he says, For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Uh, no idols, no mixing uh, with idolatry. He says, My name is, uh, is Jealous. Now, here's the thing you got to understand. Jealous is not the same as envy. What are you trying to say, preacher? You have been trained now by the world to believe that jealousy and envy are the same thing. That's why, you know, it comes out too much. Look, that doesn't mean if my name is jealous. Is God good? Yes. Well, how could the word be bad? Yep. Unless it's used. Maybe it's used wrongly. But um, look, envy is this way. It's a discontent at like your superior. Now, jealousy is mentioned in seven, I think it's seven times, uh, but God will explain it. Um, there's part of the word, look at the, the word jealous. Take out the J, put a Z. What do you got? Zealous. Zealous, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, Simon the Zelotes, he was a, a apostle. He's a zealot. Uh, Remember John and James? Their, their name was the son of Bourgeonet. What's that? The son of thunder. Uh, hello, people. They're not called the son of thunders because the son of thunder because they're quiet little church mice. They're called the sons of thunder because they were loud. They were they spoke out. Uh, Peter, he spoke out. It's, it, it was a pattern for him to just boom. Why? You got some zealots. Jesus went around, he picked up some zealots. Why? He needed somebody to yell. Amen. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trump and tell the people, tell my people their transgression. Seven times he attributes this, uh, this jealous to God. Okay? It's a concern at what? Not getting the affection you're entitled to. That's why the Lord's jealous. He is jealous because it's a concern that he's not getting the affection that he is entitled to. I didn't say that he thought he was entitled to, that he is entitled to. That's the difference in the Lord. Uh, let's go over to Ezekiel 39. 
envy, discontent at my superior. I should have what he has. Exodus 39. Exodus or? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39, look down in uh, verse number 25. Now watch how he places this. He says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous, what for? For my holy name. I'll be jealous for, see, I'll be jealous for my holy name. I'm, I'm concerned. It's not, getting, it's not getting the affection it should be getting. Uh, go to Joel chapter 2. Joel? Joel, it's after Hosea. Oh, Joel. Joel, J O E L, Joel. You got Hosea, then Joel. Daniel, Hosea, Joel. What chapter? 2. And then we'll go to Zechariah chapter 1. Joel chapter 2. Uh, go down to 18. 18. Joel 2, 18. And he says, uh, Then will the Lord be what? Yeah. Jealous for what? His for his, whose land? His. It's his land, right? Okay, it's to his seed, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, so uh, when it's the Lord's land, now think about this. Who owns the earth? God. God, it's his planet, right? So we're tenants, aren't we? Yep. How are we doing? <laughs> How are we doing on his, on his plan? We're messing it all, even to the point where do you realize that in the millennium, more people, probably 20 billion people will be on the planet. Okay, now here's the thing you've got to understand about that. With 20 billion people, how is the sins upon the planet going to be? Uh, it's going to be a lot. Yeah. When people are living a thousand years, do you realize that he says in Isaiah chapter 24, he says that the earth is going to fall, it's going to fall away. Why? Because the transgression upon it is heavy. Mm -hmm. So our transgression that we have, us, is actually affecting the earth. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Right. Every year it yields less and less. Until Christ comes back, he's going to show us how to do it during the millennium. And we're still going to mess it up in the end. Okay, so he's jealous for his uh, land. Not get, it, it, go to, uh, let's go to Zechariah chapter 1. Just before you start the New Testament. Zechariah chapter 1. Yes. Uh, look down at, uh, we'll look at uh, verse number, we'll look at 12. Then the angel of the Lord, first chapter 1, verse 12. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years, these 70 years? And the Lord answered the angel that talked with me, with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous uh, for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great, what? Great jealousy. With a great jealousy. See, you, you've taken the word and you turned around and you said, Well, Here's the thing, uh, I'm going to use that word and I'm going to say that's an envy word. No, it's not an envy word, it's a jealousy. Hey, the Bible told me to be jealous for my wife, not to be jealous that she's getting more. That's envy. Jealous for my wife, why? Uh, I, I should be getting her affection. If she's going to give it to another guy, I'm going to be, wait, wait, wait a second here. And, and i got to tell you something, you should be like that. You should not let, not that type. That, that, there's, a, there's a, a, a man and a woman affection that should not go anywhere else. 
It should not go anywhere else. God has instituted that uh, marriage. Man screws it up, God institutes it. He says, uh, I'm not getting, je I'm jealous. I'm not getting, uh, I'm concerned. I'm not getting the affection that I'm entitled to. He's not envy, it's jealousy. Jealous. Okay? Uh, verse number 15, lest thou make, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and do what? Back to Exodus 34. He says, lest thou make a covenant. Now, who's the one that makes covenant? God makes a covenant with you. He says, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and what? And they go a whoring after their gods and do sacrifice unto their gods and one call thee and thou eat of his sacrifice. Imagine that. Look, you've got to understand something, people. It gets very subtle. The, 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 the serpent was subtle, was more subtle than every beast. What he does is he gets, you to, he gets you to think that you're actually still worshiping the same God. These be Israel. These be the gods that brought you out of Egypt. They had a calf in front of them. Guess what they believed? They believed that was the God. They thought that was the creator God. They one that they knew. Somebody comes up and says, there he is. You can get that, that subtlety. Look, it's like this. Uh, all the Bibles say something different. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Go to, uh, if you take all, every single version, every single version, and you went to Hosea chapter 10 and verse 1, Every single version, I, 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 God made this. He set this up. Every single version, because I've, I've, I've seen them. They all say something different on that verse. So that gives you a different opinion on each one. What's that mean? They're all different. They're all different. You have to, did, okay, a, a verse like, um, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 no other Bible says study but the King James. Amen. What do they say? Be diligent and we'll do what? Nothing. They tell you not to study the book. Why? Because if you study it, you'll throw it away. Yeah. Amen. So he says, he says, I don't want you to eat of that sacrifice. And, and, he, and he says, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons. And their daughters go a whoring after their gods and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Okay, uh, God's got some particulars. You see, you've got to understand something. God is very particular when it comes to worship. Uh, you, you, that's why everybody's doing what they want today. God is very particular about worship. There's no new thing. You ain't got no new get-up. God took, in the Old Testament, think about it. Now, he turns around and he says uh, how the sacrifice is going to come. And he made sure, even though they were the same, he made sure he told each tribe the same exact thing, down, down, down. I know, you read the Bible, why couldn't God have said, just say, hey, everybody get the same set, do it all. No, I want it to be particular. He's that particular. I want this this size. I want that that size. 50 rings. I want... Uh, this this many cubits. I, I want you to have this a certain weight. The, you got to understand he's very particular about worship. We go to the New Testament and everybody thinks, well, it's just worship and truth and spirit and truth. Oh, we're good enough. Spirit, what's that truth? Well, that's the book in front of you. What's spirit? Well, can you see a spirit? He says, but the spirit have flesh and bone as I do. No, you can't see one. What's that? He's about the heart now. Based on what? Truth. Right. The heart based on truth. Do you realize how hard that is compared to the Old Testament where they only had a section of it? Imagine that. Well, I just think I can do anything I want. So does everybody else, people. you got the wrong God. You have to understand that. You know, God says in it, in, in, uh, in what? In, I think it's uh, Acts chapter 20. He said there was a time when he winked at these things for even the Gentiles, but says what now? Not no more. Why? You got it now. You got it now. You can't, you have no excuse. You can go up the Dollar Tree and buy a dollar Bible. You got no excuse. 
You're in the, this is the, there's people, uh, you take a, you take a, a this Bible. It's the only, just so you know, uh, in foreign countries, they ain't asking for NIVs. They're asking for this one. Amen. You go over to the Philippines, what are they, they're asking for this one. That's right. You, there's billions copies sold of this. They're, they're sending them over all the time. Why? They don't want the other ones. They'll take a sheet of piece of paper of this one. They'll take a, I'll take one sheet from home. I'll switch it with you next week. That's why you keep got to keep sending them over to them. They're hungry. People get saved over there. God's being merciful. Now, the other thing you have to understand about all this is, uh, and he's going to review these feasts next. Uh, we'll talk about it then, actually. It's better off. Uh, you'll notice he says something here. He says, uh, and thou, verse 16, and thou shalt, and thou shalt, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after uh, their gods, and make their sons go a whoring after uh, their guns. You notice he said daughters. He, he's concerned about the daughters here. I, I want to show you something real fast. Go to First Timothy chapter two. Why is he going after? And he makes sure it's daughters. There's a, there's something about that. Uh, that God God turns around and He says, look, I, I, He makes sure He says daughters. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And there's a reason. Look at... Uh, look down there at verse number 13. He says... Uh, for Adam was first formed, then he... Now watch. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. She was in the transgression, but she was deceived. Okay? Uh, what is the, What are you trying to say? Uh, they can be deceived more. Look, he wasn't deceived. When Adam comes, comes up, he knows exactly what's going on. That's what he said. He came up and uh, he even something happened and she's looking different. There's something different about her. She's looking different. Uh, we know the difference. We went over Genesis. Uh, people, the blushing rate, they didn't have this in, in, their, in their system before that. God came, uh, I mean, we'll have a body just like his. If they're perfect, what did they have in it? What? That's obvious. That's, that's obvious right there, people. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. They were in it back there. Guess what they didn't have? When they got it, guess what? They had to get out. What happened? Our blood is tainted. Right. You don't die because your body goes bad. You don't. You die because of what? Your blood goes bad. Your blood. There's there's something wrong with your blood. Okay, that's why Jesus Christ didn't come with man's blood. He came with God's blood. Amen. Amen. That's why he didn't have a father. But he makes sure he says they're sons. Now look, he comes up to Eve. He deceives Eve. But he didn't go after Adam. Why? He went after Adam's emotions for his wife. That's how he went after him. So God says there's a difference. A woman has to be wooed. Women get wooed. Men are visual. All you have to do is go to a magazine rack, people. There's the man's section. What, is it, what does it look like? It's a mess. What's the woman's section look like? It's uh, romance novels. It's uh, cosmopolitan. How I, I, It always kills me. I go over to, I go and I study things, I just, and I, I look and I say, you know what, uh, I, I look at these magazines and all the women's magazines, how to please their man, how to do this for their man, how to do this for their man, and they've been doing it monthly and monthly and monthly and monthly, you know what that means? They ain't got it yet. All they had to do was go down the other side of the magazine rack and see what men care about, and they would have had it. Car engines. Stuff like that, yeah. It's all visual. Amen. Muscle stuff and all that stuff. So, uh, <laughs> what does that tell you? Keeps, keeps just, just trying to sell magazines. Now, uh, he says, now I don't want you to go a whoring after their gods or make sons go a whoring after their... That's the important part. He says, verse 17, Exodus 34, verse 7, Thou shalt make thee no, what? Molten gods. He, they'd already done it. He, he makes sure he tells them. Now, I want, I'm going to go two places. I have enough time, so I'm going to go two places. First, go to, uh, let's go to uh, Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Remember, this is the part where they could have, if they would have been reading this, they would have known where the Messiah was coming from. 
Micah chapter 5. It's sometimes a hard book to find. It is. Always uh, after Jonah. It's another hard book to find. After Hosea. After book. Daniel. That's a good book. Come on now. <laughs> I'm trying my best now. Micah. Yeah. Micah chapter 5. I'm going to cabinet from the other side. Now, here's the part. Watch. I'm going to go from 10 to 15. He says, this is, this, these are the reasons. He says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord. Verse 10, 510. That I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of, uh, of thy land, throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off uh, witchcrafts out of thine hand, and Thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy uh, standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt uh, no more do what uh, worship the work of thine hands. See, there's the problem. And I will pluck, out, pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. See, this is how the Lord deals with uh, idolatry. If I don't want it, uh, I'm going to pluck it all up, man. Amen. I'm going to pluck it all up. Then, I, And guess what? I'm going I'm to get you guys right in the end. Uh, how's that? I'm going to go after the heathen. Right. I'm going to go after their, their, them. Why? Because they brought it in. Because they have it. Okay? So um, that's his basic feeling now uh, uh, on that on that type of idolatry. Now, let's look in the New Testament. We'll go after our own selves here, people. Amen. We're going to go after us now. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and then we'll go over to Hebrews chapter 10. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 10. See, we, you know, it's, we always look and we want to point at the Jews. What, the, what about us? God pointed us a little here. We know better. First Corinthians chapter 10, look down there at uh, verse number, okay, look at 19. It says, uh, what say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, remember, he's a Jew, says those things that the Gentiles sacrifice, uh, he says, they sacrifice to who? Devils. 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 And not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with what? Devils. With devils. Ye cannot, now look what he says, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of Devils. He says there's there's something about this. This these there's two different tables, people. There's two different tables here. Go to Hebrews chapter ten. Hebrews chapter 10, down to verse number 5, he says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Talking Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Verse number 6, In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast what? Had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Amen. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. You want to learn about the Lord, how do you do it? You read the book. That's right. Okay? Uh, you know, I want to meet with Jesus, go to the book. Right. It's pretty easy. Well, you know, I'll hold my hands up like that. It's like you're going to go to the book. Uh, he says in, a, in, in his Bible, he says, uh, where uh, two or more are gathered, and how is it? In my 
name. Uh, you hear these people, I can gather up my house. Okay, I'll be over. Please uh, tell me when you're going to have it. I'll come over your house. What you're going to find out is people that they don't, they're don't. they not worshiping. They're not praising God. Uh, they're not doing these things. Where They're not meeting with the Lord. Uh, he told them, you go meet. Hey, look, if, if you want to know where the Lord is, it's pretty easy. And I'm not just talking about in the Bible. Also, if you want to go to a place, it's pretty easy. He says in um, Revelation, he says that he's in the midst of the candlesticks. The candlesticks, guess what? They represent church ages, right? But wait a second here. Do they not also represent local churches? Amen. So where's he in the midst of? The local church. Amen. That's how he, that preaches this. Amen. Yes, it does. Amen. 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 So uh, we know where God is. Now, in that Hebrews part, we'll go down a little further because he talks about the book. That's the spiritual condition. Now let's look at what he talks about uh, on the other side of the house, go down to uh, verse number 9. And he says, uh, Then said he, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, and, that he may establish the second. Okay? that's uh, He fulfilled the law and established the second by his sacrifice. Now, verse 10, By the which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. How many times? Once. Once. For all. Amen. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which he said, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from henceforth ex, uh, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool for by one offering he hath perfected how many offerings? One, one. one. How many times the sacrifice? One. Once forever them that are sanctified whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he said he had said before, uh, this is the covenant that I will make with them. So the Lord says something here that there's only one sacrifice, and then he's going to sit down. Hey, look, is there not a church that has a, a, a cup every single week? And is there not a church that has a piece of bread every single week? And they say it's a sacrament or a sacrifice, trying to do a sacrifice every week. Uh, guess what? God said no one time. Once the sacrifice for all. You just got to apply it to your heart. He says one sacrifice, one time. And guess what? If you keep sacrificing and sacrificing and sacrificing, guess what? You got an idol. If you are taking this thing called, I don't know, the mass, you got an idol. Because God said one sacrifice, that's it. He says even the priest, the priest, he said he had to minister daily. He said he could never take away sin. With all those sacrifices. Hey, uh, uh, Brother Dave, where in the Bible does it show where God turns around and they keep bringing the lambs and they keep bringing the bullocks and he says, okay, that's enough. <laughs> right? Guess what? It's not in there. Right? There's only one sacrifice. Hey, that's enough. That's good. I like that one. And that's Jesus Christ. Other than that, you could keep you could go all day, bring the whole farm, man. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. God's gonna go, that ain't enough. Because he ain't coming yet. That's the difference. So what you got there is when you take a partake of that little cup up there, whatever it is, guess what you're doing? Taking a cup of what? Devils. Devils. That's what he says. Now, now you have to understand, Paul turns around and he makes sure he says something. What's that? It's nothing to you. It's nothing to you. You, you. you got to have the good mindset. You got a, you got you got a lot of uh, got a lot of Christians that are looking for a devil under every rock. Right. Look, a devil. You know, oh, that's a devil. That's a devil. That's a devil. Man, we're not doing enough here. The devil's really caring about. I mean, yeah, he has an army and stuff like that. But you know, I mean, you got to understand something. You're talking about the devil. Man, you you mess with him, you're gonna know it. Right. Amen. Uh, so anyway, 
Looking at that, there's those sacraments are sacrifices to what? The devils. Okay, so we've got 15 minutes left. I'm going to try and get to 26. If we can't, we'll just do it next week. Uh, look at verse 18. He starts to review the feast, and he says, The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep seven days. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month of Abed. For in the month of Abed that camest out from Egypt, that's the Passover and then the feast of the unleavened bread. Okay, he says, all that openeth the matrix is mine. And every firstling among the cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons uh, thou shalt redeem. And look at this part, he says, and none shall appear before uh, me empty. Okay? Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt uh, rest in earing time, and in harvest thou shalt rest, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, and of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, uh, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in a year all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel, for I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders, neither shall any man desire thy land. That's good. When put a put a little mark right there on your book where it says, Neither shall any man desire thy land. It's very important. And you're going to see how important that becomes. He says, When thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord God thrice in a year, thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first, the first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. And if you can check that one off, please mark that. Seed the child, the, the calf in thy mother's milk. I'm going to show you on that what that means too. Okay? So you got uh, he, you got what's called the Jews' religion right there. Okay. Now, all this that he brings up, the Jews' religion, is because of something God said once before. Uh, people don't even notice it. It's in Exodus. He set this whole thing up with one little phrase in Exodus chapter 3 when he spoke to Moses. Go to Exodus 3. It's at the very end of, uh, of the verse, too. Exodus chapter 3. Remember, he heard the cry of his people. I've seen the affliction. And then in verse number 12, he told them, I'd be with you. And this shall be a token unto thee. Now watch, look at the last part of that verse. He says, when thou hast brought the people out of Egypt, he says, what? Ye shall serve God upon this what? Mountain. This mountain. What mountain? Horeb. This mountain, Sinai. In Sinai, Mount Horeb. He says, you're going to serve me upon this mountain. This is what he... The Jews are the only religion. Jews have the only religion which is a picture of the things to come. Okay? Your... your what you do today is not a religion, but what your relationship is a shadow of those things in the Old Testament, theirs is a picture of what you do today. The Jews' religion. Now look, they are the only ones. That is God's religion. God set that up. That's the only one, and he makes sure it's right here. He puts it down for the purpose of, he told them, someday you're going to serve me on this mountain. You're going to serve me. Ye shall serve me. Prophecy. Someday they're going to do it. Just like... How many of you don't realize the Ten Commandments are actually a prophecy? Amen. What's that? He says, someday you're going to do them. Right. <laughs> Thou shalt not. How many of you have done that one? None of you. You will someday. What's that? Because it's a prophecy. Right. The Ten Commandments are actually a prophecy of something you'll be able to do someday. All right? 
So he says, the service that you have, the service that you have, what is it? Your service is a token, is what he said back there. Your service is a token, okay? And, um, and today, if you look spiritually, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, what do you got? Uh, you got a feast today, you just don't realize that the feast that you have today is the Word of God, the Unleavened Bread, you have it in front of you, is that book. Sit down and have a little bit of it, it's a good tasting thing. It's called the, the, the Word of God. Okay, now, the other thing he's talking about, he says, you're going to bring something. Uh, look down there at, um, at verse number 20, Exodus, uh, Exodus 34, verse number 20. He says, and, um, he says, and none shall appear before me empty. You, you want to bring something. Uh, that's not, look, that's not an unsaved person there. After you get saved, now you are uh, to look towards discipleship. You're to look to serve God. And he says what? He says, don't you come empty. Amen. You imagine, hey, look, uh, your parents said that. You go to somebody's house for dinner, what they say? That's something. Why? Because they knew it was inside of them. Look, you now are saved. Don't go to the Lord empty. Right. Go with something. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, go with something. Go with a good spirit, man. Go with something. Be there to offer something. What do you say? The sacrifice of prayer. Go there with something. Amen. Okay? And um, and he, 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 wants a, he, he wants you to be a... You want to be a part of something, so go there with something. Uh, God's really basically saying what? Ante up. Ante up. Come on. Ante up, people. And, uh, and he makes sure they, they understand these things. And uh, that's in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, just so you know. Uh, he says, you, you're going to come. And he mentioned the second time. He says, and don't you dare come. Don't be coming. And he says that thrice in a year, verse 23. Look at 23. He says, thrice a year shall all your young men, children appear before. Now look how he says this. The Lord what? The Lord God, capitals. The Lord God, the God of Israel. He makes sure it's the Lord God. Uh, that's that uh, 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 Yad, Yad, uh, Hav, uh, Vah, Vahad, uh, which nobody can say. Okay, Anybody who thinks they can say that, they're wrong. <laughs> if you really say it, actually, if you say it, it's really, it's Jehovah. Jehovah. <laughs> it's yeah. Jehovah. Amen. But uh, thrice a year you're going to do this. You're going to have a pilgrimage three times a year. You need to get down there to, to Jerusalem three times a year. Okay? Uh, Jesus Christ, in, his, uh, in his, all his Gospels, he's coming down. Where do you think he's going? He's going down to Jerusalem three times a year. From, from where? Cana, Galilee. He lived in Cana. He based himself in Cana. He went to the synagogue at Capernaum, and three times a year he came down. He went around Samaria like they always did. He went over to Caesarea Philippi. Who did he meet? Matthew. He was at the receipt of customs. Where's that? Up there, Caesarea Philippi, which is a port city. He, he probably's talking to him. Why? Didn't you notice he was familiar with him? Follow me. Well, there's something different about this guy. Why? Because Matthew's name is Levi. Where did he, where's his family in? They're in religious people. He said, there's something different about this guy. What's that? He's the real deal. This guy's the real deal. My family's just a bunch of phonies in their religion. You ever see a bunch of phonies in religion? Amen. Amen. There are. Religion makes for phonies. Amen. So um, he he says, uh, verse number 24 back there, he says, uh, For I will cast out the nations before thee. Now watch. And enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land. In 23... You'll notice there is a paragraph separator, right? So this is still in the paragraph. He says, you're going to come down here. Your men children are going to come down here how many times a year? And you look at that comma right there. It says what? Neither shall any man desire thy land. Right. Do you realize that God is protecting you divinely by saying, look, when you come down here and you want to uh, be with the Lord you're on your pilgrimage, he says what? I'm going to protect your house. That's what he says. Go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs. Uh, go to Proverbs 16. Now 
Did you ever notice that there's certain things that just don't happen during church services? I just noticed that. Just so you know, it's very rare. Everybody's so worried about their phone. Everybody's so worried about that. So don't worry about it. Turn it off. You're better off. You're better off to turn it off. God will take care of it. Just tell him. Ask him. Why? Well, he'd turn around and told these people he would, he would keep their land Amen. while they're away. Nobody's going to attack them. Show me the attack. Hey, look, they could have people. They could have come down and taken over Galilee and all that, that whole area up there. But can you show me it in the Bible where they did? Right. During the feast, it doesn't happen. Why? Because God is divinely taking care of them. Right. Okay? Proverbs chapter 16, and look down at verse number 7. It says, when a man's ways... Now, if you're doing what God says, is not your ways uh, pleasing to the Lord? Mm -hmm. What does he say? He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Right. You're so worried. People, you, know, you ever see that? They get a text message. They're so worried about a text message. Look, don't worry about that stuff. You're supposed to be concentrated on the Lord when you, when you come in. It, it's about worshiping Him. Uh, when you start to be concentrated on all those other things, guess what you're doing? You're putting an Isaac in front of the Lord. Abraham, Abraham, what? Isaac's getting in the way. Right. I need you to... It wasn't until he was ready to do that that God said, what? Well, now I know. Now I get it. Now you know. Now I know. Amen. So, neither shall any man desire thy land. Why are you so worried about going serving God? What's, he'll take care of when you're gone. When thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord. No man's going to desire thy land those three times a year. He says, thou shalt not offer uh, the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. You, you need it. We need unleaven. You know, we don't, we don't need to send our sacrifices up with, uh, with uh, uh, leaven, bad doctrine, bad this, bad things. Uh, we need good stuff. And, and, and he says, we need, a, we need something without leaven, like the book that's in front of you, without leaven, uh, without mistakes. Now watch, he says in verse 26, the first of the first fruits of thy land, thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Now watch. And he says, thou shalt not see a kid in his mother's milk. Now, uh, the whole part of that whole thing of him going in he's, and not having any leaven is he's trying to say, don't come down here, give me a sacrifice with leaven. Uh, really, it's like if you were to look at it spiritually, it's like this, Larry, uh, check your sin at the door. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Uh, you ever, you ever, uh, if you've ever been in the army, they have a thing you put in a barrel and you uh, check your gun. Okay, clear your weapon. Okay, they have the barrels outside. Check your gun at the door. Look, in God's world, it's check your sin at the door. Amen. Get that, get that out of the way. Hey, do you realize if you could, every time, I, every time before I preach or every time before I hear a message, the first thing I'll say is, uh, Lord, if there's something on my heart right now, get rid of it. please show it to me. Hey. Let's get rid of it right now. I don't want anything that would be impeded between uh, that word of God and, and coming to me. Why? Right, because you know yourself. You ever go to church? You ever go to church? You got a you got a chip on your shoulder? What do you think? God's sitting there going to feed, feed you. You know what he's saying? You the whole time get the chip off your shoulder. Right. Okay. How many how many people have been called stupid by God? Amen. <laughs> I mean me. I'm like I don't know about you, but you know God has. Okay. Uh, you you wouldn't have a problem saying certain things to people. What do you think God's going to leave you go? Right. You know, think about that. I mean, he's there's some people in the Bible, God's like, they know it. You know? <laughs> well, you you got to realize something that you got to check your sin at the door. And sometimes when you're not and you're not in fellowship, you could be out of fellowship. God's sitting there saying, why don't you get that real quick? Why don't you get that real quick? Get that real quick. You're not here to hear, look, I'm ugly. I have a big nose, ugly, and all that stuff. You didn't come here to hear. You came here to get something from the Lord. Okay, I'm I'm only a I'm only a thing that God's using, and just so you know, it, it's not a good choice. It wasn't a good choice. But uh, you don't make mistakes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but um, we see that part. It says, uh, "Not seethe a kid in his mother's milk." Okay, and I want you to understand what this is about. Go to Hebrews chapter thirteen.
Hebrews chapter 13. I've actually preached this before. Okay. In verse number 9. Now he had already told you uh, in verse number uh, 7 and 8, he says, Remember them that which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. That's the preachers. Who faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation. What should the end of their conversation be? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't say God doesn't change. It says these, that, that, that your conversation is to be these things. Now look at verse number 9. He says, Be not carried away about, excuse me, be not carried about with diverse, different and strange doctrines. Diverse, diversity, and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established, how? With grace. Grace, yeah. grace to grace. Grace, not with what? Meats. You, you, you don't want to get, you, look, you don't want to get grounded by meats. It's not going to work. You're going to chew them. You're not going to get them. He says it has to be. You want it to be done and established with grace, not with meats. Which, now look, which have not profited them that have been occupied uh, therein. You don't, you don't turn, look, there's people to get saved. You don't turn around and start throwing uh, those different things on them that people like their, I, I call them their pet peeves. People have pet peeves, are throwing them at them. Look, they don't understand. There's, they don't, they barely understand what Jesus is all about. You got to teach them about Jesus. He says, get the milk. Babes desire the sheer milk of the word. Now look, when it goes and it says, now look at that verse again. It says, not see the child in his what? Mother's milk. Look. They need milk, and when the child needs milk, you give the child lukewarm type of milk. Right. I'm not saying lukewarm doctrine, not lukewarm like Laodicea. I'm talking about you needed to be able to be accepted in, okay? If you turn around and start boiling milk and giving it to the kids, uh, giving it to the babes in Christ, what happens? They're getting burned. That's right. You're seeding them in the mother's milk. It doesn't need to be hot. The biggest problem I, meet, I see all the time with preachers is everybody thinks hard preaching is a guy getting up here and yelling at everybody. I'd like you to show me in the Bible where it's at. I, only, I know where it's at. It's Eliphaz. He was yelling at Job. And what did Job say? I'm getting nothing out of this. You're just yelling at me. Amen. You need... we Look, right words are forcible. I really want you to show me where Jesus Christ preaches and starts contorting his face and screaming at people all the time, <laughs> jumping up on tables and stuff. I'm not saying it can't work. Some God may use that to people. But right. what I'm saying is, he says to these babes, you want to teach them? He says, you don't need to make that milk hot. You need to make it acceptable to them. Right. Why? So that they can learn. You know, the first thing a person needs to learn is lost is Jesus is the Christ. Do you know early what the second thing is? That, that book you have in your hands is the Word of God. Right. Once you're saved, they need to be taught that that book is the Word of God. Amen. That is the first two. Then you can get in all the doctrines and stuff later on. And they're not that hard. They're just in the book of Romans. If you ever notice that Jesus Christ, the devil takes things out of context, it's because he doesn't have... You have to understand something. He may have read the Bible more than you, the devil, but he doesn't understand the Bible like you do. It's in spirit, inspired. You have to understand, he doesn't have the Holy Ghost in him. He doesn't have anything to lead him. So that's why when he gets to Jesus, he knows a lot of stuff. But he starts saying things, and what does Jesus do? He goes to the doctrine, Deuteronomy. Why? That's the doctrine of the law. So if Jesus, who is in the Old Testament, is giving the doctrine of the law, what's your doctrinal book? Romans. Romans. You want to fight the devil? Fight him with Romans. Usually, it'll do something. Why? That's your doctrinal piece. Uh -huh. Where does he always go? Corinthians. Where? To the tongue talkers. 
And you want to be disobedient. You want to be a, a Christian that goes for uh, all these weird things. You go to do, well, you go to Corinthians. Why? When he's rebuking them, and you take that as you take the rebukes as serious doctrine, right. and that's what they do. Why? Because they're wrong. If they go to Romans, they don't do these things. Why? It's the doctrinal book. It's the doctrinal book to understand those things. If anybody wants a false uh, a false salvation, where do you go, Matthew? Matthew. You want to once you're saved, you want to bad you want to bad to go to Corinthians, so you can be disobedient. Why? He's, that's what he's doing. He's yelling at. He's not yelling, but he's he's correcting. That's why the Bible says all Scripture is given, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, right? For doctrine, Romans, for, for reproof, Corinthians, for correction, Galatians, Ephesians, for instruction in righteousness, all the rest. And then you have the practical book, which shows the experience in Philemon. Amen. Sets it all up. <laughs> sets it all up and put, make sure it's distributed, just like in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. He sets the New Testament up, just like that. What? Take it to Jerusalem, then to all Judea, then to Samaria, and then go to the red uttermost parts of the world. Where's that? Acts chapter 1 and to Acts chapter uh, 7 is they went to Jerusalem and Judea. Acts chapter 8, they go to Samaria. Up to Acts chapter 12, then where? To the uttermost parts of the world. Right. After Acts chapter 13. God's, this book is just incredible if you look at it and open it up and it just see it. And then he turns around and says something like, hey man, no, not to see the kid uh, in the mother's milk and you're sitting there going, what in the world does that mean? And then you find out that milk is for babes and babes are getting milk. Stop heating it up on them. That's right. Nobody needs to know that they, they need to... Uh, imagine you just get saved. Who's the first one that comes out of the woodwork? This guy comes up and he says, what, do you have the, do you have the five manifestations of the Holy Spirit with evidence and speaking in tongues? Huh? I just got saved. What do I need to do? Do you understand that? that that's an... That would actually be, if it was, an incredible, an incredible thing. If it was. That's how you know they're a bunch of phonies. Yep. I have never seen, I've never seen charismatics uh, get people saved and leading the Lord. I've always seen them get young Christians, babes in Christ, and, and misguide them. They're recruiters of already, already saved people most of the time. Uh, in fact, we had a guy come to our house. Uh, got saved. It's her cousin. Got saved, uh, and then uh, later on, the charismatic got a hold of him, and he, he he sent me a letter, and he said he really got saved when he got dunked in the water. Yeah. <laughs> he really got saved when he got dunked. I didn't know well, but but now I know I got the Holy Ghost because I got dunked in the water. Yeah. You know what you got? You got a guy giving them a false doctrine and recruitment. Right. That's what you have. You know what they did? They gave him hot milk. They seed them. And they gave him hot milk and he heard them. That's exactly what happened. That's why he says you need to do it and do it with grace. With grace. Uh, look, people, we're here. The Bible says that if you love the Lord, you will feed my sheep. He didn't say shear them. Mm -hmm. Shear them twice a year. You feed them every day. Right. I'm here to feed you. Let God shear you with the Word of God. Right. If it comes down to the point you get sheared, you get sheared. I'm, I'm sorry. But the big thing about that Bible is to feed people. Feed them, feed them, feed them. And we got a good church here because we can talk about they Look, this small crowd. Right? You can go to a lot of depth. You know? I love it. Because it's the time when the basics are, we can put away those basic things. We've been picking up a lot of meat Sunday night. We're picking up a lot of meat on Wednesday nights. And it is beautiful. It is, oh, we don't have enough people. We sure got a lot of book. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I told my, I, I, had a, I had a boy with us one time. I said, you know, uh, he was at the house. He kept coming, kept coming. I said, in three months, you'll be teaching the pastor what, the book. In three months, guess what he was doing? He was teaching the pastor to work in the church, work at church we went to. Why? Because we fed him, feed him, feed him, feed him. Uh, you're going to go, you're, you know, you, 
you know. You just talk to these guys. You know. You're like, man, don't they even know their Bible? Right. If you don't believe it, uh, the Bible, guess what? You already went past most of everybody. You ever notice that? They don't have their Bible. They don't have the, the, the King James. What's the first thing you realize? They don't even know it. They don't know the book. Why? They got the wrong thing. They got the wrong thing in front of them. It's the wrong book. You, you think that God's, God's Spirit is only going to work through something that's incorruptible. You have to understand that. He says, not by corruptible, but by in God's Spirit moved upon the waters. What's that? The real water. Amen. The real water. That's what He's going to move upon. Hey, look, it's you're, everybody. Why couldn't it? Why ain't this one? Why? Why don't you just be happy that He gave you one, and it was that easy? Hey, look. Stop worrying about that. You know what the world worries about when you give them set plans of salvation, when they hear this and hear that? What about Aunt Ruthie? She's a saint. She's been going to church in this church. She's been dick that toe three in a row for years. <laughs> That's what they're... Hey, look. Uh, somebody dies in their family and they say, well, she was a saint. That's why she went to heaven. She was a saint. She hey, did we're, all saints. Saints. Yeah. Hey, we're all saints. We're all saints. But that's what they're saying. They'll turn around and say, she was a good person. She was this, she was that. You know what they're upset about? They're upset that if they, God gave you 100 ways to get saved, you'd be arguing for 101. Instead of being grateful that He did one and you don't have to do anything to get it. Amen. Hey, and the grace that God gave in just one that's so easily obtained. It's just like the Bible. Instead of being up, well, you know, the Greek and this, that, and this thing, that thing, and the NIZ and the NIB and all that other stuff, and they can't turn around. They, 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 why don't they just be grateful that they could go down to the Dollar Tree and spend a dollar and get a real Bible? That's because Satan has planted his seed. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you've you got to understand something. There's, there's God sense and nonsense. And nonsense. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for this time. And thank you for the Word of God. Uh, thank you, Lord, for, uh, for teaching us today in Exodus 34. Thank you, Lord Father. Uh, these things, Lord God, uh, about idolatry, we don't need that stuff, Lord. We, let us not be partakers of the doctrine of devils. Let us not be partakers of the cup of the devils. Let us not be partakers of the books of the devils, Lord Father. We ask you, Lord God, to, uh, to let us be gracious towards the brethren, to those that are just God saved, the babes in Christ, not to give them that hot milk, but to give them something, Lord God, that's comforting and grace, uh, grace by thy word, Lord Father. Uh, Lord, uh, let us not be idolaters, Lord God. Let us know that it's in spirit and truth and not try and make something out of it, Lord God, and see that it's a relationship and it's not something hard. Lord, let us be nice to people and let us be friendly. Let us have good fellowship with each other. Thank you, Lord, and hear our prayers, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to look upon us. Lord Father, get our hearts right with thee. And let us, uh, let us, when we pray to thee, Lord Father, take intercession, Lord Father, knowing what we need to pray. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.